dressed to impress. Welcome to the Purim in Parsha Tetzave perspective. <laughs> This episode is in honor of the immediate and speedy recovery of Daniel Aaron Moshe Ben Rus, and may he and all those who in need a Refua Shalema experience God's mercy and compassion swiftly. This week's episode is in loving memory of Le Mincha Bas Yaakov Yosef, Edward Ben Ephraim, Shlomo Ben Edward, and Yerachmiel Daniel Ben Gedalia. May their souls be uplifted and may their memories be a blessing. Our Parsha continues to speak about the building and service of the Mishkan. God tells Moshe the only purest of olive oils can be used for the daily kindling of the menorah. God then appoints Aaron and his sons to serve as Kohanim, as priests in the Mishkan and in the Mishmikdash on behalf of the Jewish people. During their service, the Kohanim must wear four special priestly garments. The Mechnasayim underpants, Kutainis, a large tunic, Avnit, a belt, and Mitznefes, a turban. The Kohen Gadol, the high priest, will wear four extra special garments during his service. The Me'il, a blue sleeveless robe with lower hem fringed with small golden bells. The Ephod, a vest with a gemstone on each shoulder with the names of each tribe engraved on it. The Chishin, a breastplate with 12 gems, each had one of the names of the tribes engraved on it. That sits a golden plate inscribed with the name of God which was attached to his turban. However, a question comes to mind. Introducing the special priestly garments, the Pasuk writes, Make sacred vestments for your brother Aaron for dignity and adornment. The entire chapter, the 28th chapter, our parak describes the beautiful and intricate designs of the Big De Kohuna, the priestly garments. But why the major emphasis on the physical clothes of the Kohanim of the priests? What is the purpose behind the beauty and the elegance of the priestly garments? The Sifrono, Rav Ovadia Sifrono, gives a simple explanation. He answers that the priestly garments, the big dekohuna, serve two different purposes. First, to render honor and glory to God by wearing unique and distinct clothing in his home in the Mishkan or in the temple in the Bismagdash. Second, to inspire awe and reverence for God in those that see the big dekohuna, that see these sacred garments. The Sifrono explains that just like the servants of a king wear unique and beautiful uniforms while on duty as a symbol of regalness and royalty, so do the Kohanim, so do the priests. They wear sacred and holy garments, holy vestments, to respect and honor Melech Macha Amlachim, the King of Kings, HaKadosh Baruch Hu, the Master of the Universe. However, Rabbi Lord Jonathan Sachs of Blessed Memory gives a deeper and more profound explanation. In his Torah commentary, Covenant and Conversation, he writes that the priestly garments represent the relationship between God and our world. Judaism, he writes, seems to be based off worshipping and serving an invisible and concealed God, a religion that rejects physicality for a spiritual journey that is difficult to feel and experience. But nothing can be further from the truth, writes Rabbi Sachs. He explains, at the center, at the nucleus of Judaism, is a physical and tangible relationship with God. A connection that encompasses our mind, body, and soul. A bond that stems from God's oneness and perpetuity to our time frame and moment here on this earth. Rabbi Sachs explains that the purpose of the physically beautiful and unique priestly garments is to illustrate the necessity of a physical relationship with God. Although our connection with God may seem to be spiritual, as we say, Shema Yisrael, listen, O Israel, and not see, not re'e, the objective of listening, which is innately spiritual, is to see, recognize, and witness God. On the holiest day of our calendar, we read about the Kohen Gadol, the high priest, entering the Holies of Holies three separate times. Each time he had a unique purpose. The first time he entered was to bring the incense offering, the guitarist offering to please God. The next time he entered was to sprinkle the blood from the burnt offering to ask God for atonement and for a year of blessing. The final time he would enter the Kohen Shekadoshim, the Holies of Holies, the Kohen Gadol would take out the burnt incense offering that he brought in the first time he entered. After he exited the Holies of Holies, the Kohen Shekadoshim, for the final time, every person in the Mishkan or in the Bismagdash would struggle to try to catch a glimpse of the Kohen Gadol. The prayer that we say describes the aura surrounding the Kohen Gadol after completing the service, like a groom's face after his wedding, 
like a rose in a beautiful garden, like a bright star on the eastern horizon. Seeing the face of the Kain Gadol was the culmination, was the pinnacle of the holiest day of the year, Yom Kippur. Watching his emergence and observing his euphoric spirit with our very own eyes was the apex of the holiest part of our lives, as it was then and as it is today. This lesson is ever more relevant as we approach and celebrate the holiday of Purim. The story of Purim took place after the destruction of the first temple, the first Beis Midosh. Some Jewish people went to a feast with King Ahasuerus, which angered God immensely, and he allowed Haman Harasha, Haman the wicked, to plot the demise of the Jewish people. But the leader of the Jewish people, Mordechai HaTzadik, did not sit by and accept this horrific fate. He took 22,000 children to learn Torah in the streets openly and inspired people to see beyond the evil degree and see the hand of God guiding their every move in their physical life. His incredible belief in HaKadosh Baruch Hu in God and his extraordinary actions changed the fate of the Jewish people from a dire outcome to the most joyous of holidays. The lesson of Purim is that we must recognize and believe in the oneness of God and see His presence and existence in our physical world. We must prepare ourselves to experience God's love and God's mercy just as the Jewish people did in the Purim story and see his redemption physically with the coming of Mashiach. I will conclude with the famous quote from the Baal Shem Tov, Rabbi Yisrael of Good Name. Before you find God, you must lose yourself. Have a great Shabbos and a happy Purim. Bye.